Hello and full and this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this absolutely incredible research coming out of Siberia and Russia, where the scientists were able to revive these wonderful creatures after 24,000 years spent in ice. And this is something that was never done before. At least not something that was done with tiny animals, because this is exactly what this is. So let's talk a little bit more about this, because this is a pretty incredible discovery. First of all, what are these tiny things? To which I guess I would respond, move over tardigrades because you are no longer the toughest creatures on the planet. Because looks like this record now goes to Rotifera, also known as Rotifers, also known as wheel animals. Because technically these are some of the smallest animals in existence. And just like other animals, they even come with their own tiny brains. Although generally speaking they also come in different shapes and sizes as well. But despite their unusual appearance, they're still technically tiny animals with some of their body parts listed right here. But because they're generally sort of small in size, with some of them being microscopic, with size differences between 0.1 millimeters up to about maybe maximum 2 millimeters, they also represent what's known as zooplankton. They represent a food group for a lot of different fish, for a lot of different organisms that consume them. And just like other plankton in the water, some of them are able to move around, some of them are more or less stationary, and some of them tend to attach to things and live that way, so there's definitely a lot of variety there. Although interestingly enough, their nervous system, including their tiny brains, represents roughly around 25% of all of the cells in their body. And although that might sound like a lot, their total cell number is around 1000 cells in total, which is not a lot when you think about it. But just like other animals, they're still pretty complex. They have up to five eyes that tend to detect simple light. They also are sensitive to touch and a lot of other stimuli. And some of them even possess antenna for various types of information reception using chemicals and so on. And so considering their sizes, they're still relatively complex animals. Although ironically, because of their size and because they're generally relatively harmless, a lot of animals tend to eat them, including previously mentioned tardigrades. But the scientists in the so-called soil cryology lab located in Siberia and Russia for many years now have been studying various organisms trying to figure out how many of them can survive in really really cold conditions and can then be revived after being frozen in ice for decades or maybe even hundreds and thousands of years. Now in the past they've succeeded in reviving some of the rotifers that were frozen for approximately 10 years or so. And this was already quite an impressive achievement. They also have succeeded in reviving various types of moss that was frozen in um, Siberia for many many years. They also were able to revive bacteria. And one of the bigger achievements was actually reviving an unusual nematode, an unusual worm, that was frozen for roughly around 30,000 years. Now this was a huge achievement back then, but those nematodes were microscopic and a lot more primitive than this right here. And so the scientists were now curious to find out if they can actually discover some other organisms that they can revive using relatively similar techniques as before. And so like before they used a drilling rig to extract some of the ice from several arctic locations in northern Siberia. And just like before when investigating that ice they discovered several different frozen creatures inside of it. But the thing is, for the most part once thought, most organisms do not just come back to life. As a matter of fact, even viruses and bacteria generally do not survive. There have been some exceptions I mentioned in some of the previous videos, but generally they stay frozen and do not come back to life. But in these new samples they discovered frozen ancient rotifers. And by using carbon dating they were able to establish that the age of that ice was about 24,000 years. But then once they took those frozen samples and placed them in relatively warm water and gave them just enough nutrition, as you can probably imagine, they then slowly came back to life and even started to do their regular activity including reproduction using a method known as parthenogenesis. And so this study that as always you can find in the description below provides a direct evidence that a relatively complex multicellular organism that technically classifies as an animal with a nervous system with a lot of other organs can easily survive what's known as cryptobiosis being frozen and lacking any kind of an activity that's usually related to life such as metabolism. And in this particular case, it looks like cryptobiosis lasted for 24,000 years. Which of course makes these animals some of the most resilient species on the planet. And definitely a species that's going to survive anything that happens to our planet. Now obviously it's not really clear if there was any permanent damage or if these organisms are going to be able to function normally for a long period of time. 
But at the moment, the analysis did suggest that even after refreezing and rethawing them again, they were still able to function normally and once again procreate using parthenogenesis. Which of course implies that these organisms have some sort of an interesting mechanism in order to prevent crystals from destroying or from damaging cells inside their bodies. Now this might be to some extent similar to how tardigrades do it, and they might even have some DNA mechanism that prevents the formation of crystals, but none of this is clear yet. And more importantly in this case, it's very unlikely that any similar mechanism would actually work with any mammal. At least that's not what the scientists believe right now. It seems that these primitive animals definitely develop something else that we mammals just don't have yet. But for all we know, maybe through future studies and through various investigations, we might be able to find a way to use a very similar method in helping mammals survive cryogenesis as well. When you think about it, being able to freeze mammalian tissue is a premise for a lot of different science fiction movies as well. And so there's definitely a lot to learn from the study and from these organisms as well. But at the moment, nobody really knows what's going on here and how any of this works. In the future, we might. For now, we don't. Anyway, on that note, well, definitely a really cool discovery. An amazing animal that's able to do some incredible feats of survival. And hopefully an animal that we can learn from in some of the future studies. For now, thank you for watching, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.